Hello and welcome to Linux Lads, episode 121. This week I'm joined by Connor and Amalith, but not Mike. How are you chaps? Not too bad. Good. So uh, we're going to have a discussion about like tech hoarding and uh, what do you do with all your old tech when you get new stuff. Um, but first, we're going to go to a little bit of news. So uh, Amalith, you put something in the notes there, LogSeek. Uh, what is this all about? Tell us. Uh, it's a note-taking application I started using recently. It A lot of people compare it to Obsidian, and I think that's a good comparison. But I prefer LogSeek because it's so convenient. Um, the, the workflow with Obsidian might have changed since last time I tried it, but the primary way of getting data into Obsidian was either having like a dashboard page and using that as a launch pad or using search functionality to create a page, that kind of stuff. While LogSeq focuses much more on making data entry as simple and smooth as possible. So there's the journal page, and as you're taking notes, you do it entirely stream of consciousness style in that journal page. You don't worry about any kind of organization. You don't worry about structure. All you worry about is getting your thoughts out of your head into the journal page and that you link terms as appropriate. And later on, you go back in, clean that data up, organize it, do whatever you like. Maybe that's a week in the future. Maybe that's a month later. I don't know. Who cares? It's your note-taking application. You do whatever you like. You're, you're like, that. that is future me's problem. Yeah, exactly. Get the data out of your head into the thing right now as quickly, as seamlessly as possible. Worry about the rest of it later. And you might not worry about it later until you've spent years taking notes about a particular topic, and then you go to that page and start filling out information by referencing all the notes you've taken about it in the past that are exposed through a backlink section in the bottom of the page. And the backlinks section exposes all the notes you took on your journal pages ordered by date. So you can see a chronological history of all of the thoughts you've had about that particular topic, for example. So um, this is super interesting to me, actually. This is, sounds exactly like something I really need uh, in my life. Um, I used Obsidian quite extensively before. Um, I had a bunch of plugins installed. I had like the data view plugin and everything where you can essentially do like SQL queries on your notes, stuff like that, and create tables. So you can like generate um, indexes and stuff for your notes, um, which was like super dope. Logseek actually has that built in without any plugins or anything. So yeah, this sounds cr crazy good. Like on the backlinks feature of Obsidian was something I loved. Um, so basically in Obsidian, you you would like wrap your, your like say a word in, in, a, in like double curly braces, I think. Square brackets. Or some, yeah, exactly. Something like that. And then, so you're saying in like LogSeq, it, like, how does that work? Like, how do you actually... It does the same thing. Oh, okay. Syntax-wise, it's the same. You create links by surrounding whatever link title you want with uh, double square brackets, I think is what they're called. Um, and you can actually change the syntax of the entire application from Markdown to org mode, if you prefer org mode. And I think there are community plugins to make your LogSeq database interactable from within the org roam plugin for Emacs, which is really cool. If LogSeq ever goes away for whatever reason, I'll be able to have a very similar, very smooth experience from Emacs. Yeah, I'm, I'm, as you're speaking, I'm, like, I'm literally like, I'm downloading this right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because it has an app image, though, which is a bit of a fuck around. But like, um, they, they've thought of that, and they're like, you're advised to use app image launcher for proper desktop in, in, integration. So I'm like, oh, thank you. You've thought of everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are some pretty big caveats. There's, there is a mobile app that works really well, I think, but it doesn't have any plugins and it doesn't sync any like plugin settings between devices either. So you, you have, unless you go through the work of making sure they are identical, then you end up with completely unique plugin setups and sets of plugins with settings on that are different on every machine. And I don't like that, but I have heard that they're working heavily on sync right now. And once they improve that, plugins will come next. Well, that's actually, so a lot of people's complaint with Obsidian was firstly that it wasn't FOSS. 
and secondly that you had to pay for the syncing service however i found that very easy to get around um because i would just put sync thing on all my devices and like it was the same thing like it would just work flawlessly so uh, that was the key difference between Joplin and Obsidian and why I went with Obsidian, even though Joplin is FOSS, because Joplin saves the markdown files in its own, with its own like weird like GUID thing as uh, as the file name and not just the name of the markdown file. So um, that's one thing I didn't like about Joplin. So it made it a little bit more complicated to sync things between devices for me. So um, how does LogSeq save the files? Is it just like the title of the file is just title of file.md i think it's title of file.md or .org if you're using org mode syntax but they do do instead of having spaces in the file names for example they replace those with underscores there are situations like that but for the most part they try to make sure the file name is the same as the page title yeah this sounds super cool like and they're and there is sync as well. I think it's like five dollars a month through their open collective or something. If it stores the But you can also use sync thing. Yeah, exactly. I could just use sync thing if it stores them as just regular MD files somewhere on my mm-hmm. directory, then why not? Home directory, I should say. Connor? I I've never really done a deep dive into um note taking applications, certainly to not the advanced note taking ones that you've mentioned, like Joplin or Obsidian or anything like that. I mean um, I tend to use uh, Simple Notes, which I think is uh, run by Automatic, or uh, who, who are the people who, who uh, bit, a bit of a, a teaser for later on, but like the people who run uh, WordPress. Um, so yeah, they, they have Simple Notes, which um, and does Markdown and does everything that I, I want and kind of synchronizes, but I think it's their own proprietary synchronization. So this kind of does appeal to me, but um, yeah, I, I just never have really tried out in anger any of these note-taking applications but also kind of <laughs> but the, you know what i mean you kind of know tried out in in earnest these these uh, note-taking applications that also kind of do a bit of a mind map as well as in they're supposed to be very good for like organizing your thoughts i mean who knows it could be very very beneficial for me i just have never taken a deep dive into it um just looking at their website so their website is very much uh, themed to be this kind of, I don't know how you describe it, you know, that kind of dark mode, but it's kind of very blue dark. And it was like, for for me, just from aesthetics, I was like, oh, dear God, I hope they have a better team than this. And then when, when you go into their demo mode, it's like, join a live demo. And then the live demo is proper dark. I was like, oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> I'm sure there's teams and everything like that. But just immediately I was like, yeah, yeah, th- this is like fake dark mode. This is not proper dark mode. <laughs> to be honest, I find that kind of uh, dark color scheme more pleasing to the eyes, like less harsh, because if you have like a full black background and then you have bright text, that also kind of like irritates my eyes as well. So I like to have like all the colors be muted, not just like the background or the foreground colors, whatever. Uh, I, I, again, it's, a, it is an aesthetic choice. So it's, I'm not, um, but for, for me, it's like, yeah, it's, if that's the default theme, I'd be changing that, that theme immediately. So, but it's, there are third party themes you can install. Yeah. And I'm sure you can dig into the CSS somewhere. Yes. Yeah. You can have all your own custom CSS. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's certainly interesting. I think the my benefit is uh, I've never really tried Obsidian, so I'm already not really invested in or Obsidian or Joplin or, or the other ones that you mentioned. So I'm not really invested in an ecosystem already. So uh, I can kind of do a clean slate. That is the beauty of Obsidian for me is that they are not open source, but they kind of still have the same vibes as, as open source projects. Um, they don't force you into an ecosystem at all because there's very little proprietary stuff in in there like the application is proprietary but like the things you do in it they don't force you into doing things a certain way they allow you to use it however you like so they, they don't really railroad you into doing things a certain way so you know it's kind of like yeah i'd prefer if they were fast but like you know they they still respect the user so that that's kind of enough for me, you know, and it's, it's a really good product. I love Obsidian. I have a lot of respect for Obsidian, even if I don't use it. I used to. 
So uh, next up, uh, some acquisition news. So uh, we'll we'll kind of discuss these in turn. Like so, Automatic, the company behind WordPress, uh, acquires Beeper, which I believe is an IM application, and Proton acquires Standard Notes. So what do we all think of this? So um, Beeper, um, I've used it in the past. I think I signed up for whenever they were doing their early invites and their betas and and so on. And uh, I'm like checked it out. I'm like. Oh yeah, that's cool. And then just kind of put it away. And then this headline came up. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that thing. And then tried to check it out again. So their whole thing is the, I believe they use Matrix in the back end or are uh, heavily reliant on the Matrix ecosystem. But their whole thing is like, oh, so you have, you have WhatsApp and you have uh, Telegram and you have all of those things. Why? not have the one application to like rule them all and will be able to integrate with all of these applications so when i checked it out almost immediately they're like oh yeah we're like a matrix client so like you can just sign into matrix and then use us as our as your client but like also there we're like uh do you want to tie into to whatsapp and i was like okay i'm going to give this a shot tie into whatsapp and then super seamless from a user point of view I'm assuming it's this seamless, provided you already have WhatsApp installed on your phone. But they're like, oh, yeah, just open up this thing. And then WhatsApp itself just uh, came up with a pop-up saying, hey, we're receiving this request to authorize this application. Do you wish to proceed? And then on the other side, it's like, yeah, put in this this code, copy, paste that into into, uh, WhatsApp, and then authorize from that side side. So from a user perspective, it was very seamless. Um, um, The... I also advertise a fair number of other chat applications. I have not really checked them out, um, but I don't know. Um, I I used kind of one chat app to rule them all way back in the day, and I don't know if I'm really in- inclined. I think I I kind of prefer that they're compartmentalized into their own thing. I mean, back in the day, back in when there was Google Talk and there was um msn messenger and yahoo messenger i'm really dating myself by saying this but <laughs> yeah, we were all uh, there um except me <laughs> the one the, the, the <laughs> except except amlet because he's 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 the fetus of the conversation um which is an application that's still around but now is pretty much dated as as in terms of his ui but pigeon was the one application to rule them all and could integrate with everything. Still does, but it just still looks like it was, it, its UI hasn't advanced in the last 15 years. Um, so, but it's simple and it works. Back then, it was, it was all very interesting to, to be chatting on the one application and then chat with various different ecosystems. But now, yeah, I, I think I'm more, I've moved on and I'm more inclined of yeah if i want to chat to my whatsapp contacts i'll open up the whatsapp application if i want to talk to my telegram contacts i'll open up telegram and so on yeah maybe maybe just i don't know what, what do you guys think about one application that will integrate and will you be able to respond to various different contacts i like that idea in principle on paper in practice i don't think it's for me i tried it with Matrix or Synapse and a bunch of the bridges. I think Cine, the Matrix client, mm-hmm. and Element are, are what I used with that setup back then. And it was, I, I had a whole bunch of bridges. I had a bunch of different chat platforms all inside that one application. And I, I didn't enjoy it. It was cumbersome to navigate, find what I wanted. Um, it, and it, there was just so much. It was constant notifications unless I turned them off. It was, I just didn't like it. I do want specific apps for the specific platforms, except for Signal. I can't stand Signal at all. (laughs) And that is the only chat platform I do use inside Beeper. I've been using Beeper for like a year or something. And I do enjoy it as a Matrix slash Signal client. There's only one contact I talk to on Signal, and that's all. If it was more, I would probably want the dedicated app on mobile, but then on desktop the signal desktop app is just horseshit to be quite honest i know that you mentioned this yeah i'm inclined to agree with you the only time i use signal has been on on mobile really and um, but i have tried their their desktop application their desktop application is fine it's functional 
it's just eh. Mm-hmm. A lot of bleh. Um, so there's, there's. I don't really have much thoughts on their desktop application. It's, it's, it, it does the job. Um, not that I would use it that much. In fact, the the amount of times that I would distro hop and then they know completely forgot that a um, signal on desktop, and then like six months would go by and be like, oh yeah, I should probably do that thing again. Um, on in relation to the amount of contacts that you have on signal, I have two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think I mentioned this on a previous episode, but uh, a bunch of like our, our main friend group is in WhatsApp. And then I talk to like all all of you guys and stuff in Telegram, all the, the Linux people on Telegram. But with Signal, we, we, we tried. Um, we really tried to uh, use it, but it just devolved into everyone just sending Nicolas Cage memes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally you look at our conversation in signal and it's just like six months worth of nicholas cage memes no joke <laughs> i will say beeper's mobile app or the new one to be clear is very 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 pleasant mm-hmm. i might even say it has potential to be better than telegram in my opinion i like it a lot personally i know a lot of shade gets thrown at telegram for their client not being open sourced but like it's a good app. It's it's it it works very well and and it's very responsive and it's it looks nice and I just I just like Telegram. I wish like WhatsApp would take a page out of Telegram's book to be honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh for for clarification, I believe it's their server side is not open source. Their client side is actually is GPL. Ah, I see. Okay. Yes. The clients are open source. The servers what's not. Oh yeah, yeah. That's probably what I meant to say. But yeah, um Telegram are now going down the the boat of everyone has to have a story and they're now and like their announcements of their new features are now a story at the top. I'm like, yeah, that's all well and good, but like can I go into the settings and just disable stories? I can't. Okay, now now fuck you. <laughs> Wait, what client are you using that you can't? Uh the the standard one. Uh well unless I'm dumb and it's somewhere deep in but I've, I've actively went looking for it yeah i did notice that myself actually um but i have to remind myself of this yeah it just kind of stopped appearing for me it's in in shitification 2024 everything everything is just in being like they're they're pushing the thing the features that we don't want they're also doing all the cryptocurrency crap and ads yeah, it's the whole. I mean, I suppose it's the reason why we have this podcast. But it's the whole um, anti-user mentality. I mean, I know it's not cool these days, but I actually do use Reddit, and occasionally I do use Reddit chat. I'm like on the desktop is fine because I can use the old uh, Reddit interface and the um, Reddit enhancement suite. Um, then that combination is killer. It's like chef's kiss, <laughs> but like. Uh, Reddit chat works on that, which is perfectly fine. On mobile, it's like, oh yeah, if you want to use Reddit chat, you have to use our official application. And their official application is dog shit. Oh, the Reddit app is so bad. Yeah, I hate it so much. I'm like, just freaking open up your API and let third-party applications use your Reddit chat, please. <laughs> I actually, I don't use Reddit at all anymore. Like, I used to use it a lot, but and I, but I, I would never post anything. I would just read things on it. Um, but does it still have the, like, old.reddit.com subdomain? Yeah. Oh, it still has that. Okay. And you, you can you can set that, that once you log in, you can set your default interface. So let's, like, let's say in your settings you've set, oh, I want old interface to be my, be my default. And then if you're logged in, you can just go to reddit.com. You don't have to press this with old.reddit.com. And so if you click on the link, it will just open up in the old interface as long as you're logged in. Brief aside, though, uh, I have a, I have a little confession to make, guys, and you're going to be all very disappointed in me. I rejoined social media. I created an Instagram account. <sighs> <laughs> I just, no, but there's a reason because like I I would constantly like find out that I had, because I'm a big music guy, I I love metal and I'm big into the metal scene Mm -hmm. and I would constantly hear of gigs and stuff in Dublin that I had missed or that were happening like next week and there was no tickets left and stuff. And I found out that quite a lot of bands post their tour announcements and stuff on, on Instagram and like half my mates and half my work colleagues would talk about Oh, I saw that thing you were doing on Instagram the other day. So I, I'm not. I'm sorry. It was just FOMO. 
um and <laughs> i was just like i'm sick of like not being connected to the people that i know you know not like ever like intense ever present connection you know like that that's unhealthy but like you know just kind of being in the loop a little bit with with the people that you know and uh yeah so just having a little bit of a presence there um so yeah i i thought i'd go in i'll i'll analyze all the privacy settings i'll suit i'll change them all to my liking uh i'll make sure that zuckerberg isn't getting his grubby hands on all my data even though he just is anyway you know fuck it i'm just posting pictures of my cat and and pictures of my guitar so whatever <laughs> I I can definitely um, empathise with that situation because remember um, it was a couple of episodes ago when it was just me and you, me and you Shane, where I was talking about um, Facebook and the fact that I deleted my Facebook and then had to recreate a Facebook because I felt like I was missing out on, on social engagements mm. and then realised that I didn't log into it in about two months. I'm like, what's the point? And just deleted <laughs> it again. But yeah, uh, I can definitely uh, sympathise with that. But uh, um, I think you can... At present, you can sign up with just an email address and password. Like, I don't think um, signing you with, like, a mobile phone number or anything like that is required at all. And rumor is that um, because of the EU, thank you, EU, um, that they you can keep them separate. So you can literally say, um, oh, I'm, I'm just signing up for just Instagram. Like, fuck off with your Facebook business. Yeah. I'm just signing up for, for Instagram. Um, I believe that that is coming down the pipeline. I am. And on the base, a base of that, I, like recently, I got a pop up with on uh, YouTube on that vein of um, uh, Google saying, "Yeah, uh, it's better when you integrate all of our services together." Or do you want to keep them separate? I was like, "No, keep them separate, please. Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to give it to them. Like, I mean, they were probably strong armed into doing this, but like, so I'm not going to give them too much credit. But in the settings, there's quite a lot of like mental health and safety features and stuff that are actually quite good uh so there's like you can set a reminder you you can set a pop-up like a notification to pop up on the screen and say you've been using instagram for this amount of time maybe you should take a break um you know so just like to stop you doom scrolling and stuff and uh you can designate like stuff like keywords that you don't want to see so thing if things are like triggering uh, to you or, or things that cause you trauma or whatever you can block that stuff outright stuff like that just like um and you can set like a, a circle of close friends and stuff so not just any random random arsehole can see what you're posting and uh things like that you know so so there's a lot of fairly thoughtful features in it now that i actually wasn't expecting um and look it's fucking meta that they are not doing <laughs> that out of the goodness of their heart they're doing that because people caused a stink about it and they were or they were forced to do it by by some regulation so you know you should have done it 10 years ago you cunts <laughs> <laughs> I definitely sympathise in, in that situation because you know, and I think I've discussed it before. I do have photography as a as a hobby, and Instagram is pretty much the photography social network. As in, some and I've done it before, where and it's it is a, a dopamine hit or whatever. Sure, we're in this circle, and um, it's nice to meet other tech people, but sometimes it's nice to just post to a general platform and if you realize that just some random person has liked your photograph that is not part of the linux open source community or whatever is and you're like oh that's nice no it, it genuinely does work i mean i have tried um going to pixel fed which is like the the fediverse version of instagram and i just feel like it's just the tech community echo chamber <laughs> Which is I was gonna say the very same thing actually. Um yeah, my Mastodon feed just kinda of became insufferable because uh don't get me wrong, not throwing shade, like the people on there are lovely, no 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 doubt about it. But like yeah, it just became a total like far left echo chamber, you know, and, and just like every sing like every second post is about being on Mastodon or about FOSS, you know, like and it's like can we just use it like a social network to talk about our lives in general, you know? And, um, maybe it's just the people I'm following. Maybe I'm have a narrow view, a narrow view of this. But sometimes you gotta venture out into normie land for a while. <laughs> Amulet has been quiet for a while. Amulet, what are your whole ta thoughts on on Instagram and um, privacy and? Well, um, Facebook's a crap company. Agreed. None of their products are gonna be any good. But at the same time, yeah, you need to be able to connect with people. I under completely understand all that, and I think it's just fine. The important thing is that 
you understand the decision you're making and its implications. And I think you do. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I had a good five or six year break from all that stuff. Um, Twitter was the last one to go. It wasn't because of Elon Musk. Um, I, I had actually gone off Twitter before he even bought it. So it was just like, because Twitter was insidious, man. Like Facebook was just like, because there was just too many people that I just didn't really care about, like just hundreds and hundreds of people that I hadn't even spoken to in real life for about, over 10 years and uh, just random people I knew and in passing. But like Twitter... Uh, uh, tr trust me, face Facebook got insidious too. Oh yeah, for sure. But like uh, Twitter started to properly like push my buttons after a while and it was actually getting a bit creepy. Um, and I would see suggested tweets and stuff and I was like, where's the option to just show me things from people that I actually follow and people and maybe maybe make a second degree of people that are friends with them. I'm okay with that as well. But like, yeah, like it just became like it just I, I would just get it would surface all this stuff that that uh, that that just got me really angry and just like I and just would just trigger me and I was like they're doing this on purpose like I, I it sunk in after a while I was like they're clearly like the algorithm has figured out what will what will trigger my emotions and what will keep me on the app and I was like fuck this delete it or I put it inactive I don't know if I fully deleted it but uh but yeah I haven't gone back fuck that place hate Twitter <laughs> Uh, so yeah, like, but Facebook had gone like years before. So I was like social media free for like a good five years and then went back on Mastodon and now I'm back on Instagram. Damn it, man, you're making me tempted to sign up for Instagram again. <laughs> and a lot of people say that Instagram is the least shitty one of them all. Like people say that the conversations on Instagram tend to be positive and constructive and there, there's, there's no hate speech and there's no fucking like, you know, culture war bullshit going on there. Like it's just... It's just like, hey, I did a nice thing. I went on holidays and, you know, here's my cat. Here's my, here's the food that I ate. You know, yay. You know, it's just nice things, you know, like it's, it's, there's no, no triggering bullshit. Though there are still, um, mental effects to being in that kind of environment. I think it's, it's, I mean, you're doing this, but definitely with your eyes opening, you're going into this and you're going, okay, I'm not going to follow freaking influencers and i'm not going to follow freaking toxic people i'm not going to follow freaking corporations that just want to advertise to you going oh yeah f follow our insta and like we you you might get a, a discount for our products or whatever i mean i mean might if i ever was going to sign back up for it it would literally be as a photography social network i would follow people that i enjoy their photography and i would post photos myself as as a way of getting back into photography as a hobby to practice it to get positive feedback on it or even a negative feedback on it or or whatever and, and just yeah I'd, I'd pretty much use it as a photography social network which i think it started off as i think that's the core part of it uh, i think it, w it was set up as that before it was even purchased by facebook it was just as a photography social network essentially so that's what i would use it for yeah, uh, I don't. I have tried uh, Pixel Fed, so maybe I'll try Pix Pixel Fed again as well. So I don't know. Yeah, I think the I think what what Amalith was getting at is like the danger of Instagram is you see, like, and this is any social media, you see the best bits of everyone's life. Oh yeah, that's where I was going. Yes, you see them when they're like looking really good with like a nice filter on, and they're looking like really hot, or they're like on holidays and they're in a really nice place. But that's basically everyone on there. Nobody picture nobody takes a picture of themselves and puts it on puts it on Instagram at like seven in the morning before they've had their coffee, like in their pajamas. <laughs> like nobody ever does that. If there was people who are literally just taking selfies, I wouldn't be bothered following them. As I said, I'm like as a photography social social network, so it'd be like people taking photographs of landscapes or people taking drone shots or people like or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. The actual photography would be the, the core part of it. If if anything, if they if if anything, if they post photos of themselves, it'll be make themselves me less inclined to follow them. <laughs> An unintended consequence of me being on Instagram is I have found a bunch of places in Ireland that I know want to visit because a lot of people post places like uh, really like beautiful scenery and stuff, and I'm like mm. I'm like holy shit, that place is only two hours from me. I can go there like this <laughs> weekend if I want. Yeah. So it's that's that's a nice aspect to it. Anyway, we got way off topic there. So, <laughs> so hey, who knows that on, okay. on a Linux and open source uh, podcast, we're going to go, hey, we're tempted to sign a backup to Instagram. <laughs> so uh, Proton 
acquired standard notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> smooth, smooth segue, smooth. <laughs> so what about that? Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think we touched on this a bit earlier, but then we got sidetracked on our social media discussion. So um. <laughs> In, indeed, uh, yeah. So um, so if you're not tempted by Logseek, which uh, I'm allowed to put into the into the show notes. So there's also standard notes. Um, so standard notes is another one, just like we've mentioned, uh, Joplin and Obsidian and Logseek. So if you um, have been using that before, or have you been you've been tempted to use it? Um, Apparently, it's been acquired by Proton. So, full disclosure, I do pay for uh, Proton myself. As do I. As my main personal email address and the things that come with it as well. Like, I think the the, the plan that I have it also includes like Proton Drive and also includes Proton VPN um, as well as that and a few, probably a few other things. So, maybe they'll throw in standard notes as part of by pre-existing um, subscription who knows um if that is the case i might use that because it's uh, which i suppose is the reason why they do they acquire these things is like uh, i'm like oh i'm tempted by logseek but standard notes is, is included in my thing ah i might as well just use that but uh what are your guys thoughts on uh proton acquiring standard notes so i have a lot of thoughts on this because i like what proton are trying to do um, that's why I have been paying for it for several years now. And like you, my, my primary email address is like proton.me. I like that. The, I like what they're trying to do. Like their, their mission is, is good. I, I, I think it's a good thing, but they're trying to create like almost like a Google like ecosystem as well. That's privacy respecting and stuff like that and open source. And they have the encrypted emails and stuff like that. But, um, I would like to see them, you know, maybe not pull back from that mission, but like I, I would like them to focus a little bit more on making each individual product better as well um, and as good as it can be because Gmail kind of blows ProtonMail out of the water in terms of features. Like there, there, there's just small little things that annoy me about ProtonMail. So so like their bulk search and like because bu- like, my inbox is a nightmare. So <laughs> it's like, and I want to, <laughs> I've, been trying to do inbox zero for years i know that's obsessive but like it really stresses me out when i go into my inbox i'm looking at it now and i've 3017 unread emails uh so oh, Jesus, yeah i know dude. right like everyone like freaks out when they hear that um but it i, I want to like reduce that and i want to get rid of all the cruft and unsubscribe from stuff that i i don't read ever but their their search and their filtering and everything is just rubbish it's just so bad and it, half the time it doesn't even work like i i will like bulk delete a bunch of emails and stuff and i'll go back three days later and they'll still be there things like that like it's just it's just not very i i don't know if i'm doing something wrong i don't think i am but like uh but yeah it, it just seems kind of janky like the 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 email thing is is sort of just very basic email wrapped up in a nice little wrapper but like it, you know it, behind the scenes it doesn't seem to function all that well i mean someone who's a lot more clued in on the infrastructure side of things like amalith might be able to correct me there but like yeah for, for me i i think it's nice that they're trying to offer an alternative to, to to the googles and the microsofts of this world but like don't fall into the Mo- mozilla trap you know <laughs> you know <laughs> don't try to be mozilla like we've heard this on other podcasts ad nausea mozilla just make a good fucking browser proton just make a good email experience and i'm happy I'm trying to find clear licensing information about standard notes. I can't find anything. I know it used to be open source. There was mention of it being a GPLv3 I saw somewhere. But then the maintainer, the creator, doesn't like a GPLv3 because they don't want to be toiling for free only to enrich someone else. And that makes sense. But then they relicensed it to Creative Commons in 2023. But Creative Commons isn't really meant for code. It's meant for media. Um, mm. But then they relicensed it back to AGPLv3, but only some things are AGPLv3. And I, I'm just confused about whether it's open source or not. Licensing hell. And what pieces are open source. Yes. That sounds like an absolute mess. Uh, you'd, you'd imagine... When anything gets acquired, be um, be it something that's closed source or something that's open source, immediately like the the new parent company is like, okay, what do we have here? 
and just go through it and then think about the strategy going, okay, so you guys have this in place already. Um, do we want to go ahead with this or can we clean clean things up a bit or whatever, or make it more streamlined? So you can imagine Proton is probably going through going, okay, what do you guys have and uh, how is it laid out and everything like that? And hopefully they will um, put a bit of more sensible structure on it and, and something. Last time I tried standard notes, I think the server was self-hostable but it was missing or you had to pull in dependencies proprietary dependencies to provide things like a markdown editor or a spreadsheet editor so we've been talking for a like an hour on the part that's supposed to be the news <laughs> yeah i noticed that too. it went a little yeah. bit off the rails i'm not gonna lie but a good discussion nonetheless. Uh, tune in for part two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thanks for bearing with us. Uh, that about wraps it up for this week. As always, uh, if you want to buy a t-shirt or a mug, you can go to our store. That's linuxlads.com forward slash store. You can discuss each episode in long form on forum.linuxlads.com. We have a bunch of other stuff like a Steam community, Matrix, Discord, etc. We are all individually on Mastodon, and we also announce new episodes on our Linux Lads Mastodon. You can find those on linuxlads.com forward slash contact. Uh, But the main place to get in touch with us is on our Telegram group. Uh, So linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram, and you can email us on show at linuxlads.com. I got them all this time. Wow. (laughs) And in very, very good news, which I'm incredibly excited about personally, and I know everyone else is. OGCAMP has returned. So OGCAMP 2024 will be going ahead in Manchester in, in the UK. Um, it will be in the Manchester Conference Centre uh, near the, in the Pendulum Hotel uh, on the 12th and 13th of October 2024. Um, you can go to ogcamp.org to uh, get details about that. Um, so it, the news is still kind of developing on this. Um, so from personal experience, I would thoroughly recommend OGCAMP. It's a hell of hell of a weekend it's a lot of fun it's my number one favorite FOSS event I've been I think four or five times now and yeah it it's basically the thing that got me into all of this stuff you know so I uh, really solidified my interest in it anyway so I'd thoroughly uh, recommend everyone go um it's it's free there there's a pay what you want model that they have this year so it's very democratic or whatever you want to call it uh but um, yeah, I thoroughly recommend going. And they are looking for sponsors as well. On the latest uh, late night news, I think Gary was on and he was talking about it. So I think they might have changed their their um, ticket model slightly from previous times. I think it's um, the tickets are forty pounds, but I think it's kind of a still a pay what you want. So I think it's more of a this is a suggested donation if you want a ticket. If you have less than that, they'll take whatever you have. And if you are feeling generous and want to pay more for it, they'll take that as well. Previously, I think they're like, it's free, but we have a we have a donation link if you want. But I think here it's more of a, this is a suggested donation. Um, this is the suggested price for the tickets. They're slightly more strongly encouraging you to help out. <laughs> yes. Monetarily. Which is completely understandable because mm-hmm. it's uh, it's such a great weekend and it does it is a considerable amount of money and effort to to put that on and rely and you can't always rely on people's goodwill so um yeah i would encourage everyone to to throw whatever you can towards them because they do a great job of putting this on and it's always an absolute barrel of laughs and i just want to shout out kind of the unique selling point of our camp as well which makes it so good is that they have uh it's an unconference so essentially what you do is you arrive on the day and you can have r- written a talk literally the night before if you want and um, they do have a main track of kind of scheduled speakers ahead of time but then all the rest of the slots you can arrive on the day put a post-it note with the title of your talk on a board and you can just be assigned a room for for your talk on the day if you like so the ad hoc nature of it just makes it so good and like me connor and mike have been a few times and we've seen some really really fascinating talks so uh, yeah, one one time, I don't think it was the most recent time, possibly it was the, f- the first time that I was there, but there was one time where a guy was talking about, uh, where he literally set up um, 
a mobile phone network, um, like mobile phone servers and everything like that for broadcasting a mobile phone signal on a bunch of Raspberry Pis. He had like four or five Raspberry Pis and he just legitimately, and he said, I had to apply to like the communications regulator to say that I'm going to be doing this. So I have a license for uh, doing this. It was for 2G um, only because th- that is what the license he had for. And also, yeah, but he, he said, uh, yeah, it's I specifically had to apply for a license for this because it's so regulated. <laughs> And he said the SIM cards, in order to run off his custom network, he says there's websites where they literally sell sell you blank programmable SIM cards so you could program a, a mobile phone that could pick up the signal. And it was very interesting as well because we were on... Uh we were on the third floor where he was giving the talk and he said, I only have a license to do this on the ground floor. <laughs> so we have to do it in the lobby <laughs> after the talk. Gen- yeah, genuinely true. He said uh, when he was planning this, the room that he was allocated was on the ground floor. And then I think like an hour before the talk, they said, oh, you're not on the ground floor. You're now up on the third floor. And he says, I don't have a license for this. So he said, he, when he's given the talk, he says, if you want to see a demonstration of it, you can join me down at the lobby where I do have a license for it. <laughs> So that about wraps it up for this week. Thank you for joining us. We will see you again in about two weeks. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. The Guinness helps me host.